up, broods and broodettes? It's the Pico Dudes. It sure is. I'm Jeremy Adalgo, and with me is Sam, MC Technology, Rathard. Yo, it's MC Technology. Yeah. Just got done recording my first album. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Album? Why are we wearing headphones? I know. We can't see. We can't hear each other. (laughs) So it's like... Oh, (laughs) Oh, sorry. Single. I just got done recording my first single. You got done recording a single. Okay. You can't... Well, it could be an album if that's all I ever do. (laughs) Well, maybe we should make that happen. Anyways, we'll release it to our patrons. No. Are we really going to do that? Yeah. Why not? Oh, lucky patrons. They'll lack... They'll completely lack the context. Yeah. They'll be like, what is he talking about? Pulled out a diss track against one of our coworkers. Uh Uh-huh. It's okay. It's all right. There you go. You challenge me. I'm coming. Yeah. So in today's episode, we're going to review the... This is Misery Whip Scotch Ale from Old Rock Brewery. Mm, I'm really trying hard not to spoil what I think of this beer. (laughs) Because we've taken just a quick taste. Just a wee dram. And it didn't suck. Mm, God, that's so good. Mm, Didn't suck at all. So this is a uh, Misery Whip Scotch Ale. So... um, Go order this Pico pack. <laughs> Spoilers. So Misery Whip. Uh, they took the the title um, really from old lumberjack technology uh, terminology when you were working that giant old, saw. Old lumberjack technology. Techno- I'm MC Technology. <laughs> yeah. I can't stop. When with they this. were working that giant saw. <laughs> yo, you know yo, all that technology yo. of the the, the of, teeth of teeth teeth technology. Cuttings. So the teeth cut so much faster. In case you couldn't guess, this is not first podcast tonight. Oh you know God. how it works. No. Um. And anyways, so they had this giant saw, right? Mm-hmm. And you get those two guys working it back and forth, and if they caught wrong, that thing would bend and then whip out of the guy's hands and whip back at the other guy, and they called oh. that the misery whip. Yeah. When that and so even in their in their logo they have a picture of like lump two lumberjacks sawing down a tree. It's called the Misery Whip Scotch Ale and it's in the style of a Scottish wee heavy. Scottish wee heavy. I didn't see that under the BJCP guidelines. Did you not? No, I, I didn't. It's got to be in there somewhere. Um, I just searched real quick online and they said Scottish wee heavy is uh, you know it's an ale but it's overwhelmingly malty. That was literally yes. the terms they use. Overwhelmingly Check. malty, rich dominant um, sweet malt, both flavor and aroma Check. with a lot of caramel character. Did it say perfect to drink in late fall, early winter? Mm. Did it say just one? Hold on. I had something in my mouth. Oh, what? And so do you know, like, and maybe I'm jumping ahead of ourselves, but what's you, the, you, our sales, our, our sales. Uh, oh what God. are the, what are the stats on this beer? So this is an eight and a half percent. Okay. I can feel that. beer, which Honestly, is only like kind of mid range, mid upper range for a mm. Scottish wee heavy. Yeah. Um, twenty IBUs, so not a lot of bitterness, as you've probably noticed, oh, so and good. supposedly twenty one SRM. But this is a pretty dark. Once we get past twenty, you can't see at the bottom of the glass how you get some light kind of coming through it. No. So even if you, were even we if you to video your... this, or are we pretty good not videoing? It? Uh, we should have videoed it. We should have. But you know what? We're not going to on this. We're episode. so you know what, folks? You don't want to see us. We are just. It's been, uh, this is the day before Thanksgiving, right? Day before Thanksgiving. We have had long work weeks. There's so much We've going had, like, on. We've had like long, three long work weeks. Yes. And um, we're wiped. You don't want to see. We look like broken men right now. Yes. It's, it's, it's been, it's been a challenge to be, uh, I gotta work at video worthy. Last night. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing like 14 hours of work. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. I was sending, I was sending like <laughs> emails midnight. out at midnight. I know. <laughs> I'm getting responses back from, from, from co-workers and i'm thinking their actual responses but they're just out of office replies <laughs> i was like thanks everybody i'm like oh i'm glad you have time for a vacation exactly so i'm gonna try and check out old rock brewery you know i did not do my homework normally i know about the breweries we're talking about uh-huh but i, I kind of rushed us into this thing right <laughs> i don't i have no idea it's not a brewery i'm familiar with i don't even know where they're located so i'm gonna go try and pull up some information on them but let's start with this beer because you know this is one that I bottled. Yeah. Uh, I naturally carbonated. Yep. So I love my um, tap, room. tap room. 
it is sweet by I'm making too many beers and I can't keep them all going at once because I don't have enough kegs. Yeah. And every one of my, so, you'll be proud. Every yeah. one of my serving kegs is full of beer. And I have extras now and they're all full of beer. I know all of my, my serving kegs are full of beers as are my brew kegs. And the challenge is right now is getting the CO2 for the, for the tap room. like such an idiot. Go on. Uh, so, so I've got that issue dialed. Um, we've got a new part coming so I can take my extra CO2 tank and use it to fill the, the CO2 bottles that are made specifically for the tap room. Um, and you'll be seeing that featured a lot more as we, we, we podcast more, especially we've got a Van Damme episode coming up, right? We did the banger brewing black IPA that was so good. Yes. Everybody loved like hands down. We took that to work. People were just amazed by it. Now they've got another one called Van Dam. We just kind of cracked into a bottle, and it wasn't carbonated. So, so you know what? Here's my moment moment of shame. Um, <laughs> we we tried it. We actually drank a bottle mm-hmm. of uncarbonated, like a liter of uncarbonated beer. The whole thing between the two. It's good. and you know it's really good. And I'm gonna go back to my other four liters of it. It had sugar because I found a sugar pack the other day. Oh no! And I'm like. What is this? From? Cut it like Scarface. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea. And as we opened this, and the pop, the top didn't pop it. I didn't give it that pop. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And we poured it, and I'm it, like, it literally like cr- whined at us. It, it was like, oh. <laughs> and we I'm opened sorry. it. <laughs> so you I forgot to sugar me. I forgot to sugar it, and you know what? It's still good, but the sweetness, and it's a very sweet beer, and we'll uh-huh. get into that in its episode. But the sweetness of it. It's too much to have an uncarbonated. Well, I can't say too much because we drank a whole bottle of it. Yeah, it's we not both that went too, back like, for seconds. It's be, It'll be better. It'll be way better carbonated, but um, for sure, it's gonna be a good one, unless you have contaminated bottles, which I don't think is the case. No, this is not a contaminated bottle. It was actually nope. a really good beer. Yeah, uh, it just wasn't carbonated. I'm I'm really working on um trying to find this website for old rock brewery here's the sad thing they're in duval i know they're in duval they're 15 minutes away from me are they really and i have never been there in my life and so now i owe them a visit um, uh but yeah, i don't think maybe, their website works with ios yeah maybe we need to go like Ooh. have a conversation with them and Field set trip. up an interview because this beer oh, yeah. is one this of this beer is really yummy all right I'm it sorry. doesn't work on any ios you can Spoiler try your alert but... if you don't like this like hit the hit the plus 15 seconds like if you don't want to hear what we're going to rate this but i'm going to give it all my stars and i'm going to buy a lot more of it you gave it full stars full five stars you are at full mast on this beer i am <laughs> i'm at full mast on this beer sorry for you you have to watch me at full mast at least you're wearing pants mm-hmm. um but this is a so it is. It's a Scottish Wee Heavy, which I don't know about the style. It is an ale. It's called a Scotch Ale. Um, oh, I love Scotch Ales. That's that's probably yes. part of the reason that I'm like oh. in love with the beer to begin with. But as a Scotch Ale, it is a really good Scotch Ale. So give me your give me your impressions off the nose. Take a take a big, good. So there's not a heck of a lot. There's a little bit of a roasty malt, but it's roasty it's, malt. It's it's pretty it's roasty malt. It's pretty light. It's um, it's it's hard for me to give you a bunch of impressions off the nose because I have the I have I've taken mouth. a dr- drink of it and it's sort of it's like it's been in my mouth. But it's it's definitely like a roasty malt, very nice, kind of a <clears throat> just a nice roasted. Yeah. Like this is such nowhere, a malt forward beer. Though. Yeah, it's it's a malty, but it's not. Give like, a chuck of malt balls. <clears throat> it's like the inside of those, not the chocolate, but the inside of that malt ball. The malt part. Yeah, that they call that. <laughs> they literally call that like Screw malted you, milk. Or something. These are fingers. This is Look like at them. this is like malto meal in the morning <laughs> on a cold day <laughs> with lots of good brown sugar in it. Brown sugar, so much. Yeah. So. If you go to the Pico Brew website, they describe this. Here's here's their description, not okay. off the style guide, but off the actual beer. A rich malt, sweet and strong, mm-hmm. with a jam, roasted malt, and smoky notes. Oh. And if you try this again, now that you've heard smoky, I think it's not as smoky as that Berliner Blut we tried, but there is a smoky finish to it. Oh, yeah. There's smoky for sure. So when you say jam... Yeah. My brain, there's not a lot of the, the, the... It's not sweet jam. No, it's like a bacon jam. Yes. Have, Have you, you ever had bacon jam? Yes, it's like a bacon so that's jam. That's my jam. 
That's your jam. So this is this is like a bacon jam. It's nyang, it's nyang, not nyang. overly Get in my mouth. It's not overly like it's not overly bacony. Like don't don't drink this beer. This doesn't Go. taste like bacon. It's not a beer. You're not tea, drinking right? a bacon yeah. beer. But there's that there's that little hint of like if you took Me bacon jam. and you put it on a smoker and then you <laughs> sprinkled like uh, brown sugar over the top of it. And let it like <laughs> caramelize and sorry to get all candy fied. What am I supposed to do after I come? <laughs> You're well, clean up. <laughs> that's that's where you go with that. Um, and then <laughs> this <is> very <laughs> and then, salty jam. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> not first podcast. Uh cutting that out, not really, so just drink. Take a drink. Um should we just start saying drink so we don't have to go through yeah, that we'll whole cut out, we need to say drink. The whole Sorry, yeah. I'm looking at this other bottle of things we drank today. We've oh. drunk a lot of stuffs. This is a whiskey beer. Um, um, I would like to do a review on this. We'll have to buy more, but this is the last bottle in the store. But you know we're both Dead Guy Ale fans. Oh I've gotten God. into Dead Guy Ale whiskey, which is whiskey distilled from Dead Guy Ale. You uh-huh. can buy this in some stores. Dead Guy Ale whiskey. Sorry, folks. We're on a tangent. Yes. And then they went back and made more Dead Guy Ale that was aged in Dead Guy whiskey barrels. Oh, my gosh. It's like double Dead Guy. So, so it's kind good. of like what we have coming from it. Andy Lusk soon. Oh, you're right. Describe we, that one. Well, he has is, uh, worked with a licensed distiller to yes, distill yes. a Denny Con vanilla Imperial bourbon, bourbon porter stout. Porter stout. Yes. Um, and and distill that into an actual bourbon. Then take that bourbon and put it into as the bourbon additive to another batch to the of vanilla bourbon imperial stout. vanilla bourbon border, porter stout. So, so he's many not words. adding a bourbon to the first one. He's just distilling it minus bourbon. So it's a Denny and, then, and Denny. It's de- it is the inception it of is, Denny Con imperial Denny bourbon porter stout. Denny and Denny with vanilla. It will be the bourbon in the Denny Con bourbon imperial porter stout. And so, that's brilliant. And that's kind of what they did here is they used... Dead Guy Ale, made a whiskey from it, then used those barrels to age more Dead Guy Ale. And I love Dead Guy Ale. This is really interesting. The vanilla, and we're way off topic, but super good, folks. Sorry we've enjoyed If you see a bottle of this, go buy it. Grab it in the store. It's delicious. It's rare, but if you see that little skeleton in his in his little cask, you grab him. Yes. And I've been, like I said, I've been drinking that that whiskey. And I'm really into Irish I'm whiskey. Sad. I didn't get the. To I'll try have a that. taste for you afterwards. Okay. I kept a splash, and I've been. <sighs> I did, and so I've been dry. drinking it. So that was what I got through. What was that big show I just watched? Oh, uh, Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House, guys. On Netflix. On Netflix. If you have Holy Netflix, do yourself shit. a favor. Watch this show. Mm-hmm. It's you know for a show with with. Uh, I'm gonna stop and not say what I was about to say because it's a spoiler, but. It's a fun show to watch. Some of the best photography I have ever seen in a TV show. Yeah. Um, I thought that the DP, the director of photography on Friday Night Lights did an amazing job. Agreed. Um, there's a handful of shows that I've been completely blown away with. The actors are great. The writing is great. But the, 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 the DP set up shots and they do one around episode six or seven. That's like a 30 minute single take shot where the oh. camera's moving the entire time. Ridiculous. My mind was blown. Yeah. And... I wasn't even scared. I had to go back, watch it again and be like, oh, should I be scared? Because my mind was watching the photography yeah. the whole time going, how are they pulling off this shot and how much was required to set it up? It's a little bit of a, um, it's a little bit of a so sort of a stupid. scary premise, right? A scary premise. Yeah. yeah the so, first episode kind of got me. And after yeah. that, it was mostly jump scares. It was great writing, great story. Yeah. Like it's definitely character development Ugh. heavy. Like it's, it's, but I love a good character piece. It's so awesome. The, the, um, the horror portion of the film almost sort Pretty of becomes, light. yeah, just, it's just a it's light always premise. there but it is so actually if you go back apparently like i've i've read that there's supposed to be a ghost present in every frame of the entire series i don't know how true this is they but- did a lot of faces i read a whole because i get science fiction magazine they re- i read a whole thing every piece of wallpaper every window they've put like little faces in them well and i think that's so it, your yeah. mind gets messed up because your mind you you're, you don't consciously recognize it but subconsciously you're seeing all these faces and all these pieces all the time and it's it like kinda... that giant dick in fight club when he like starts cutting dicks in the movies and just showing that to people <laughs> as he's like i have no idea what you're talking about you've never watched fight club i have watched fight club he just puts it in there for a split second in every movie that people are going and watching in his theater 
Really? Yeah, we have we have at least one listener who's gonna be mad that I turned this whole thing into dicks. <laughs> but... <laughs> How did this whole episode become about dicks? <laughs> All right, we'll cut that out. But anyways, drink. So we're house back on, to on haunting of haunt, hill house. Haunting of hill house is very Netflix. good. See it on Netflix. Go watch it. Uh, you know, I loved Altered Carbon. Uh, Altered Carbon got uh, kind of beat on because of, you know, the violence portrayed against women, which it absolutely does. And so if that is something that really gets to you, don't watch it. Yeah. But great sci-fi show. Um, Netflix is doing some really good stuff lately. Mm-hmm. And we're not even being paid by them, which is really sad. No. But, but uh, if I had to pick something, maybe you know, we will be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. Any day I'll now. title this entire episode, Netflix. Review <laughs> of Haunting of Hill House. <laughs> It's a four and a half. Go see it. It's a four and a half. Yeah. It's, it's a good. it's a eight point seven out of ten. Yeah. Um that's my quick take on it. Good. It's worth definitely worth watching. Mm, yeah. Now what about this beer though? Because we're still we're almost done <laughs> drinking this beer as we talk. Our Scottish We Heavy. Um you know this thing won bronze, silver, and gold at the Washington Beer Awards over the last three years. It is just getting better and better. Oh my gosh. It is so brilliant. Mm. Like I bet a lot of people aren't picking up this Pico pack because it's not one that speaks to you. It doesn't have a cool label. It doesn't have a cool description. No, um, it's not even a style that's I, popular. I was going to say, it doesn't even fit a style that most people would be. If you're a dark beer lover, you owe it to yourself to try this. If you're a beer lover, you owe it yeah, to yourself to try this. I kind of have to say that. Because you're, kinda... you're, like, you're going on this weird, like, um, not weird, sorry. Journey? But, but you're going on this. Yeah, you, I betray <laughs> you. You're definitely going on this journey where you're understanding, like, all the different nuances of oh, every style yes. of beer. From and enjoying. Double again, IPA. To... Is this taste different than what normally comes out of your Pico Brew? Oh, for sure. Step one of using your Pico Brew. I hate saying this. Half the beers you get are going to be very similar. Yes. And that's where a lot of people get turned off of the machine. Well, especially if you go by everything that sounds every like it's going to be brew free, brew free or die. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is Every a great Pico, IPA. Ba- Pico pack, and so is Stingray IPA. They were both yeah, awesome. Twenty First Amendment. But if you've had those two, you can probably move on and start trying other Pico pack styles. Yeah, because your other forty are gonna taste the same. Oh my god! But this is like, like I, Berliner I don't remember Blut. ever trying anything like this. This is like mixing Berliner Blut no. with um, with milk mustachio. With milk mustachio, a I, little bit exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah, got a it's... good light smoke to it. It's got a lighter. It's not. It's a very dark beer. So this thing's made with Maris Otter, Munich, and chocolate malt. I mean, uh-huh. those are like the dark beer malts right there. Yeah. It's got some roasted barley, and then they have some other malts. That oh, they the won't barley! Mention. I'm picking up on the barley. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the the roasted barley is one of those things where, mm. ah, man, it's just it just adds that little <sighs> bit extra. Like I'd it, I'd love to see this beer. Like this is great. If I was gonna add any variant it'd be like a little bit of rye like a little bit of rye would kind of just it might have a little rye in it oh does it really it might oh sorry read on no 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 i can't read on because they literally say a couple additional things that we cannot mention because it's a secret recipe like potentially rye like potentially rye Mm, because i don't know how to make this much better i really don't it It is so and what's better is I don't get the alcohol. Like we try eight to nine. This is an eight and a half percent beer. We try eight to nine percent beers where we're like this tastes like my breath's on yeah. fire. Yeah. No, this is like so. So the the yeast. It's more like a Guinness drink, like a swallow. Is more like a. It it has that it has that trait to it, but then a little <sighs> bit extra sweet, almost a toasted marshmallow. Is that am I off a little bit on oh, that? You totally. Like not totally burnt, but slightly like well cooked yeah, marshmallow, just, s'more almost. Mm, yeah, just a graham, hint of that graham cracker marshmallow and yeah. a little chocolate. And, it's got the chocolate uh, malt in it. In that, this is like fucking drinking a s'more. This is really good. It's oh my re- god, it is. It is like drinking. Like I now that you say <laughs> that as as I'm processing what I just took a drink of. It's not a hundred percent there, but it is really close. I get the chocolate malts really heavily there's yeah. that little like balance of the graham cracker sort of sweetness but yes and, and it's not bitter at all. in the back oh my gosh this is so good <laughs> i need more of this i know weird this is gonna be gone I'm so gonna have fast to call an uber home tonight <laughs> he's so good i'll leave you a little oh mm. and it's got you know what naturally carbonated pour it good head we were worried when we opened it because it didn't explode no good head perfect. i've got a good three quarter inch head on that little glass of beer it's 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 persistent it's not just dying away right away um, Medium-sized nice. bubbles, I think. Yes. You know, it's not. It's, they're not it's like not super, super tight. fine. 
This would be great on nitro. Although I'd be a little Ooh. bit worried. Like if we put it on nitro, I think it would mellow things out a little bit. And it bit doesn't. Too it's much. a pretty mellow beer to begin it with. Is. I think it really is. And that's what kind of gets me is that low IBUs because mm-hmm. sometimes dark beers I need a higher IBU to really get the feel and hit out of mm-hmm. the dark beer. It's a low IBU dark beer. This is my perfect beer. Are you serious? I've, I'm oh, cheers, so buddy. serious. Like oh, I'm this, so happy. This beer right now, like it's like it's it's all of the aspects of my favorite beer. Oh, it's so good, fresh because we've had it in the glass so long. Into one, the fresh, the bubbles oh, I hit know. your it's tongue. Just, it's like plow. Yeah. Um, so I have taken to carbonating. I got myself a brew bag. It's you know there's 70, 80 bucks online. Mm-hmm. One of the best investments I ever made. So I yeah. went on Amazon, got a waterproof. Please, if you're getting one, get a waterproof one because you can put ice in it too, so you can cold crash in the bag before you rack. If you're in the Puget Sound area, go buy one from Micro oh, Homebrew. They're yeah, sixty five dollars Tony there. Tony's awesome. He will help you not only get that yeah. figured out, but also. So I I actually think save like, some money, meet a cool guy. Yeah. It, Tony's and his, his entire whole staff, staff. His whole staff. They do. They know their shit, man. They're yeah. like they're like BJCP. I go them. I go to them and I ask like questions and I ask. Um, so we have a, a episode where we actually go and review like Rainier beer, and it, you, it comes out of here. Yeah, it comes out of here. And you never knew that rhyme. Rain, you didn't grow up here. I didn't. But um, Rainier beer comes. But we out added of here. different hops to it that we distilled on you're the right, Pico you're scale, right. and we got the recommendations from them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, they're dude, they are they're awesome. They know their oh, stuff. It's so good, fresh because the bubbles are so strong. And uh, so, if you're in the Puget Sound area, go see him. He'll help you out with that and anything else you want yep. to know about beer. Um, super friendly, super helpful. Support your local business. Support your local uh, homebrew business. And that's a big thing is because Pico Brew, while an amazing fun machine, is not hopefully intended to put your local homebrew store out of business. No, not It at actually all. can work very well. You can go get fermentation vessels, cooler bags, fresh hops, all sorts of neat stuff yeah. from your local homebrew store. So here's the thing. Bottles. I had an initial conversation with Tony about like our podcast and what we were trying to do. And he was like, yeah, you know, you know, we're trying to figure out how this would turn into yeah. a benefit for our company. Exactly. And I'm like, dude, I've come in here. I buy nitro. I buy CO2. Yep. I buy all the different things that I need to brew my beer, to keg my beer. Yep. Cause, cause what the Pico brew does is only like, let's say a third of all the it equation. All does is make you a nice wort. It makes you an excellent wort. You still got to ferment it. You and, do everything else. And if we've learned get nothing your own yeast else from Tony, yeah, oh my God, your home go get store. different yeast yes. from Tony. This beer might really mm. benefit from your, your Denny's favorite, right? The 1450. Oh yeah. I didn't even think of that. Because it, if it added that little bit little of yeast, like, yeah, that little bit of a uh, cinnamony taste, that could be kind of interesting. Oh, that would be almost too good. Oh, that would, I like, might need to change my clothes. in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you can't tell, we are digging the heck out of this beer <laughs> i'm i'm gonna go with a five just in case like <laughs> yeah you'll have to wait till the end for for, for sam's Ooh, review but this is a five star going. like so Sc- scottish or scotch no is it scottish ale? it's a scotch ale scotch ale yeah so scotch ales are a beer that my wife and i can agree on Ooh, i should like, send you home with a bottle of this <clears throat> you should so my wife and i have gone to a couple of different breweries now gotten flights and we all end up settling on the scotch ale as our favorite oh that's good and and she typically likes lighter beers but yep. when you get to a scotch ale there's something about the way a scotch ale tastes that is just it's like the comfort food of beers Right, it's not the porter. It's not like even the Guinness, which has that coffee yeah. aspect to it That's or anything. Light but beer, dude, this is like a like a shepherd's pie of beers, and you it's want it like, really. yeah, you've got you've got all of your your good your beef, your good vegetables, and everything topped with a layer of baked potatoes and this is like your jam you're making me so hungry right <laughs> now we're getting back to patty coins haven't been there in a week oh my gosh so let me tell you something about um racking this beer and here's something i found with the pico brew and it was something that i'd never really connected with because i haven't used my pico brew to rack most of my beers um about four pico packs in i switched to fermenting into buckets uh-huh. and i did all my fermentation in buckets and i hand racked most of my beers. Now I've moved fault. away from the buckets to a degree because I think they add an extra layer of potential for 
oxygenation. Yes. Yeah. And and I started finding that in some of the beers that weren't as clean as I expected. Mm-hmm. So I moved back to brewing in my brew keg, racking directly into bottles or my serving keg. Yeah. So we did my first racking in almost a year using my Pico, but my first racking of the Amber Waves, which oh, really? we recorded a couple episodes ago, and I did not like, just to be honest. We're going to completely re-record that. I think you, something was off on that. I do, and you know what I think it was? Hmm. I found, and it never really hit me, if you were like, uh, I normally do two brewers and two brewers. <laughs> Man, <laughs> two I'm beers. Hurting. I am so hurting. I do two also beers. Also a local brewery to uh, George. Two beers is a great, they're just down the road from us. They have some really good stuff, um, by the way. I find I'll like do two beers on a on a Sunday because I have two brew kegs. Sounds I'll do, like a good name for a band or a podcast. Two beers on a Sunday. Two beers on a Sunday. Fucking Sorry, Pico cheers, dudes, bro. Yeah, bye, Pico dudes. Two beers on a Sunday, and that would be a way more fun podcast. Yeah. Um, and I'll do that, and then I'll go. So my fer- fermentation plan is: I let that thing cool. Sometimes I'll put it in a sink with ice, but I'll let it cool. I'll pitch my yeast, and I've gotten down to about half a packet instead of the whole packet. Yeah. I found the whole packet. Brought out especially with the S uh, SO4 and SO5s. Yes, yeah, it was Cephali. almost yeah. It was yeah. The Cephali is too much yeasty flavor yep. that it yep. added. So I'll do about half a packet. I'll pitch that in, and then I'll put it in my brew bag. Two weeks now. That's mm-hmm. just my thing. I don't care just what do, it says. Just do two weeks. Don't rush the beer. Don't rush it. No reason. Yeah. Let so let no the reason. let the yeast finish fermenting, and then let it let it kind of come back and clean up all of the esters clean and all up. the esters, yes. like the extra stuff that's in there. I said esters twice, but you know she's the hottest one on Golden Girls. No, she's said. the one. She's one. She's not in Golden Girls. And oh, two, <laughs> no. <laughs> we remember we said Esther sounds like a Golden Girl, oh, and right, then right. we started getting into a whole Marissa Tomei speech. Yeah, going on. So it cleans up. We'll cut that out. Two weeks. Drink. 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 (laughs) Two weeks minimum. And sometimes I go three because I get busy. So when we came over and did Epic Brew Day, I think I'd gone two to three weeks. And I'm thinking, great. These beers are going to be great, right? So I took them, set them on the counter, fired up my my Pico Brew, Mm -hmm. went to rack. And, you know, first, when you go to rack, it does a flush of your... Oh, right. Yeah, of yeah. your of whatever your, was in there previously uh, of your tube because it's going to use that tube to put air into the keg and make pressure so you can rack now i flush that thing for about 30 seconds i'll hold off for a second and i'll finish that up you take it i'm not so gonna take good. all of it but i'm gonna so take, it a little good. Bit. take it all jeremy you take the rest um <laughs> that last <laughs> inch you want me to take the last inch you take the last inch um just Deep. a tip and oh my god i'm such a <laughs> child so 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 listen up I ran that thing for about 30 seconds into the little uh, cup and got out most of the liquid. Are you listening? He said, listen up. I said, listen. Yeah, yeah, you, you said, listen up. Listen. listen. Uh, what? Uh, That's what uh, happens when you record uh, raps. Kate listen. says I can't uh. rap. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, I don't know why there's a syringe here. I am so from confused our hot water right now. Is that what that was from? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a syringe that's Whoa. used to put things into liquid a baby's bottom. still bottom. came out. Yeah. <laughs> A baby's bottom. <laughs> Why did those two things happen at the same time? So, if you're not having fun listening, I don't care. We're having fun recording. Dude, this is the best episode ever. And so, get this. Ran that thing for about 30 seconds, stopped it, and then hooked it up to my brew keg, set it up on the output, racked my beer into the bottles. Good. So I went back a couple weeks later because my next round was ready. And this time when I set it up to to expunge, if you will. You forgot. No, no, I actually did it. Yeah. And what I noticed, the water coming out smelled horrible. Yeah. It smelled horrible. Because guess what? You brewed two to three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. You did not run a rinse cycle when you were done brewing because no, it doesn't no, make you no, do one. I did. You did. I did not because Pico Brew does not advise that. Maybe they do, but it is not they, something they you're... do on the Pico S. So on the Pico oh, really? S, as soon as you finish brewing a brew, there is a rent cycle that goes mm. through, and you actually use. So first, you expunge everything that was. So yeah. You, you, you put an about an inch of water into your step filter, and then it runs I'm not that folding it in through. half for anybody. <laughs> yeah, and then you and then you run that, and it goes into your waste container. Yeah, right. Then you pour that out, and then you you have your your um your wand on the um 
The bottle. Yeah. What is it? Bottling wand. Bottling wand. Yeah. yeah. The bottling. No, 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 not the bottling wand. The the other the other fucking wand. With a Pico S, I get two wands. I don't have so many wands. I have nice. So many wands. I'm like a fucking fairy godmother. Nice work, here. Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Expecto Patronus. Well, I was gonna say something that sounded like beer, like beer Tronus or oh, something okay. like That's that. That's way better. Than anyways, mine. so you actually suck the the rest of the water out of the reservoir tip. <laughs> Like a condom. No, it's a <laughs> reservoir tip. So why do the... they have a reservoir <laughs> no. tip? It's just reservoir. a reservoir. So French. Reservoir. Reservoir. So it comes out of the reservoir, and then like all the distilled water you put in your reservoir goes through and 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 expels through all the different hoses that that put distilled water or hot water cycled through your yes. hops, your grains, yeah, or you're, whatever. You're making the Pico S sound really cool. You know what happens on the Pico C? No, what happens on the Pico C? Your beer is done brewing. That's it? You're done. There's no rent cycle afterwards? There's no rent cycle That's afterwards. fucking bullshit. So when you come back three weeks later to rack your beer and you hit go, all that water that's coming out smells freaking horrible because it's been sitting in there for three weeks being nasty. Now, before I brew, knowing this, because the last year I haven't like used it to rack, but I use it to brew. Yeah. I always do a deep rinse and then a rinse before I ever brew. That's a good idea. And so my brews come out great from that. But the problem is when I started racking, that first racking we did, yeah. I didn't rinse first. So uh, this is my advice. Came out. Uh, oh, it's so gross. If you have a C, Mm-hmm. It does not ask you to rinse after you're done brewing. Rinse. Before you rack your beer, run a rinse cycle. That's step one. Mm-hmm. Step two, when it goes to expunge. How about how about after you brew? That's even better because everything cycle. hasn't settled and yeah. gotten gross yet. Because that's just part of what the Pico, the Pico S does. Yeah. Is it just runs a rinse cycle like you... You you expel like you put stuff into the pico yep. the, the step filter and it clears out like all your your two drain lines and then you go through and you pull you clear out the I rest of the, the water. And the sea also does a rinse cycle after you brew. Now that I think about it, because well then do it. But the, no, I do, I do. But even though you've run your rinse cycle, the water from your rinse cycle has still been sitting in your hose for three weeks. That's why it does the like um well a brew more b. Then brew more, brew more like brew daily. Brew, I wish yes. I could buy you know what? so many kegs. You need to drink five liters of beer a day, or you're a pussy. I, you know, I kind of, I kind of wish it was easier to get the brew kegs for the Pico Mall. They're, they're like, they're a hundred bucks a pop. I know, pretty much. I know, right? They have how, for, how about the C? The C's are like same, right? They're the same, they're not any cheaper, which is crazy because they don't have bollocks. <laughs> I know, they need bollocks. Bollocks, bollocks. I, I want. <laughs> so I want, I want, I want a Z. Uh, I want a little bit more. I want to be able to know, brew a little bit I know. more. We need I want to talk s- to a Z owner. Uh, well, yeah, maybe like Ron Zimmerman would be Ron Zimmerman, a good guy to talk. Well, we to. got to drink some real amber waves because I have to redo it. Because again, I bobbled. We it. have to redo that. I didn't clear all the lines first. Even if I rinsed three weeks earlier, like the water's still been sitting husks. inside. Yes, it's still been sitting inside those hoses mm-hmm. for three weeks. So before you rack your beer. So here's what I've Teabag taken to do. it. No, that's no, not where no. you're going with it. Here's that? what I've taken to do. I brew up two beers on a Sunday. Uh-huh. Wait two to three two weeks. Beer, beers two on beers a on Sunday. a Sunday. It sounds great, Dude. doesn't it? I wait two to three weeks. Uh-huh. I come back. I do a deep clean and then a rinse. Uh-huh. Then I rack my beer. And even when I go to rack, I let that hose run. Listen up, folks. Not for 30 seconds. I let it run for about five minutes. I give it a wiggle and a jiggle. I shake it like I'm standing at the urinal. That thing Whoa. will have water come out for three to four minutes if you keep working it. You keep running it till the no more water's coming out. And when you smell it, because it's kicking out air, right? It's kicking out air. You When you smell it, it should smell clean. If it smells nasty, run another rinse cycle. But you should be doing it till it smells clean. Because mm. whatever's coming out of that hose is going directly into the beer that you're about to rack into either bottles or a serving keg. That's where I think I screwed up when I started racking beer again that wasn't racking by hand. Yeah. I mean, I like to hand rack a lot. Yeah, it's so much racking. Oh, so, so fulfilling well, well, to hand rack. But here's the thing, though. Like the, you can control the speed, Well, the, the other the thing tempo. that we should consider doing is starting to, instead of using, like the Pico C or S works oh, well as a good. racking mechanism. Try that beer. Try it. I mean, like drinking Oh, my gosh. So much I just got so much. I got like Hershey's S'more. I just got a real chocolatey taste on that last 
swallow. All right, I'm gonna finish my thought. Okay, because I ahead. know this will bug you later if I don't. But the Pico C or the Pico S do a good job of racking, right? They pressurize. They do. They do a great job of racking, except you don't get the bottom inch of your beer. Well, but yeah, yeah, but they, they pressurize your keg, yes. your serving keg, right? Yes. And they move it into whatever, whether it's bottles whatever or whatever vessel you want. Whatever vessel you want. So, so whatever that vessel is. Like, I can actually stop licking the microphone. <laughs> That's so funny. That might get used for a guest later on. Don't well, do that. if you're a guest that, and I go, it. <laughs> if we go, ew, <laughs> it's because that's the microphone I was making out with. All right. I'm going to cut that out. Take a drink. Take a so, drink. Anyways, so where was I going with this? So um, the pro way would be <laughs> the to pro. Actually, pro tip, get, folks. actually get CO2, use CO2 Instead of oxygen. For a closed transfer between your brew keg and your serving keg. Why can't our tap room do that? We need to talk to some Ketchu. Because I bet you it could. Tap room probably. Especially with the bollocks. It could on the bollocks. Yeah, except for you don't really need the tap room to do that. You just need an input from a CO2 tank to come in on the tap room on the on the inside of the bollock keg. And then you... And then use the out to your... The out goes to your serving vessel. Um, what you people should people who have home you're right for though. a long you're time you're suggesting racking dunk, with CO2 instead of oxygen it's closed system brewing and by the way guys at micro homebrew completely recommend this so really I have now bought purchased a second CO2 tank mainly because I like my nitro tank and I want to keep using that because oh. beer on nitro is so good I don't care what kind of beer it is beer on nitro is so good I am um, drinking this out of a Guinness glass and it's so much better than Guinness. It is so much better than Guinness. And Guinness is my like my standby. I am so this is like two right. Guinnesses in one glass. Like two Guinnesses fucked made a baby Guinness, and that Guinness grew up like Arnold Schwarzenegger and got in my glass. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it's called a what a wee wee. It's fucking a Scottish wee heavy. And wee so heavy. it means it's a small giant. What? No, it's heavy. like a midget with a giant. Cock. So it's like a midget with a giant. Cock. Yeah. Wearing a kilt. <laughs> so you can like Dick see dragon the, on the ground. He the looks like a down. <laughs> He's just tripod, he can dude. Run twice as fast. And this is where we make sure this goes explicit on iTunes. Yeah, please don't let your kids listen. I mean, unless they want to get an education on. I might midgets. have to put in like a warning about like oh five minutes God. ago. Way five minutes ago, maybe at the very beginning. Oh my God, it is so good! I can't stop drinking your beer. This beer is. I want more bombing my it. face. No, it's not because in a good want way. It. No, I mean you no, know you like want it. you know there's there's. Mm-mm. You want it. There's um nothing forced about this. Like you keep putting it in there willingly and drinking it because it's so damn good. <laughs> I'm so glad we're not recording today. Oh what? my god. We're totally recording this. I mean I mean video. Oh. My face is red with flush with embarrassment. But at least you're wearing pants. It's happening. And a dirt fish hat. Can we try and get a Dirtfish sponsor? Dirtfish, if you have oh any my God. interest in driving a rally car, go to Dirtfish. Good. So, do you know there's only three rally car or rally um, schools in the United States? No, I didn't know that. There's one in Texas. There's one in Sammamish. Is that where we're Snoqualmie? So, where is where's that? Freaking, we've been there. Dirtfishish. Dirtfishish. And I, I can't remember what third one is the East Coast, but there's only three rally schools in the United States. Travis Pastrana has something to do with Dirtfish. Oh my right? gosh. I just, Isn't he like a part owner or something? I think I don't so. Care. There's a bunch dirt of. Fish is if you awesome. go through and see all the old suits and stuff they have of mm-hmm. drivers that have been yeah, through there yeah, hanging yeah. up on the wall. These guys, so I just watched a whole episode of some TV show where they spent a couple of days building a car to go rallying in. They actually run the, they did the Pikes Peak, and now they're coming to do a rally in Shelton. Did you know there's an 18 mile rally yes. course in Shelton? Yes. Well, I mean, we've raced the road course in Shelton, but we haven't, I haven't done the rally course. No, but there's, there's not only that, but there's one that happens in the Pacific Northwest, usually like Anacortes mm-hmm. or somewhere um, in the, in the peninsula. That's a giant, like, world rally. Like, everybody really? from, like, all this. Well, yeah, these guys built a car specifically yeah. for this. It's one of the biggest rally runs in America. They went and built a car. They're out of Texas specifically for this race. And Oh, my God, we're going this year. Oh, my gosh, yes. That'd be so much yeah. fun. Yeah. I, 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 You know, they said something interesting. They see, uh, They said, most race car drivers see the same corner a thousand times. Mm-hmm. 
rally car drivers see a thousand corners once. Yes. And I was like, oh my God, that's so true. And that's where the skill level changes. Yep. And that's where it's so important to go to a place like that and get those skills. And they can drive on every surface. So they can transition from tarmac to gravel to mud to like snow to whatever, right? Like that is, that is like, like you can drive. If you're a rally driver, well, if, no, you're, yes. if you're a NASCAR driver, you can fucking turn left. Yes. The baller move is having someone next to you, hard right, over incline, etc., And you're going over a hundred miles an hour. You can't see what's coming. And 13 you have, degrees left. And you have to trust the person sitting next to you to tell you what to do and drive that car to the point where you could die. Fuck that. I can process what they're saying fast enough yes, to do it. Fast enough to Rally, there's no racing like rally racing. Can we just agree? Agreed. There's no racing. I call in, I mean, some of these people, gods of yes. the sport. Yeah. They, they, anyways, we're way off topic. Call in McRae, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. That guy, that guy's got stuff all over Dirtfish. I, I would, I would say call in McRae, like rally racing. I, I kind of would go with like F1 as your, your secondary. Yeah. You see a anything lot of at, different drivers. End anything up in after that is like, Okay. It's almost, yeah. I, I love how NASCAR is supposedly about the driver and not the car because the cars have been equalized, but it's not Bullshit. about the driver. No. It just, oh. Anyway, sorry our NASCAR fans are like, I'm turning this off and shooting Mexicans with my gun. <laughs> sorry. Wow. I'm going to build a wall that they're going to pay that for. That got deep. Um, Anyways, this beer, guys, will make you so not racist. It's a really good beer. This is the great equalizer. You will want people this coming is... into our country to try this beer. I want to say it's a NASCAR of beers, but it's not it's that not. shitty. It's not. It's that. so much it's, better. It's, it's, like, it's not the Rainier. This beer is the great equalizer of humanity because when you drink it, you become a better person. <laughs> Except for us. <laughs> this is a really good beer. Dude, this is awesome. So... Scoring on my end, if I were going to put a score to this magic that's in my glass, mm-hmm. I'm at a 4.75. You're stupid. It's a five. <laughs> I love you, man. It, this I is a five. You. I have it never... doesn't go higher than five. You've I've... used five so many times, I'm not sure what's a five anymore. I've used five maybe five times. But this is more five than any other five that I've ever fived. That's why you can't throw a five out there. I know, but see, the thing is... I think I've like, made one 4.75 in my but, entire but you're, you're, you're like, podcasting career. Your understanding of a five has to be able to to, to, to grow. Shades because, of five. Because I had, shades a five. Of five. I had a five. I, I have. I got to have 50 you shades ever, of five. You ever been with a five and then be like, no, no, this one's a five. Oh, God. Everyone's that last five. one was not a five. This one is a five. This is more five than any five I've ever fived. <laughs> That's that's how I can go with it. Oh my god, it's like, awesome! I would put on my sex jeans. <laughs> you have sex jeans? I have sex jeans. That is horrible. I have Fifty Shades of Five sex jeans. No. And when I go drink a I beer that is sweats. this fucking good, like I'm going to the special room in my house <laughs> that is ready for me to enjoy this beer. <laughs> you're gonna you're about to say anybody who's married with wives. Who's, who's either been forced to watch or listen to them rant about the Fifty I've, Shades of Grey I've trilogy? I've got a room for this beer. I've got a room. It's it's the Christian Grey room. Yes, this beer is fucking good, dude. <laughs> this beer like Christian Grey looks like. Like prior pussy. to this beer, the Milk Mustachio. Milk was Mustachio my was fucking amazing. jam. But and prior to Milk Mustachio, like Denny Khan Denny Con was my <laughs> you my, fighting my fairies gym, over yeah. there, bro. Uh, oh, I got him. Oh, shit. oh you just you just whacked it. Oh, that's fuzz. That's not even a mosquito. No, that's not even a mosquito. That's just fuzz. I'm so sorry if that came out loud in your headphones. Um, should I cut that out? You might need to cut that out. Drink. Drink. Um this is a really good beer and in in case you haven't been paying attention, Misery Whip Scotch Ale from Old Rock Brewery. I don't know where this beer came from. I've heard no one review it. I've seen almost no reviews online. No, no. one's talking about it. These guys are 15 minutes away from my house. This is some good beer. We got to go to their brewery. We got to do a live podcast from their brewery talking about this beer, tasting this beer that you made against the beer that they made because I know I want to see what it. This, I want to bring a bottle to their so place. Good. 
This is so good. So congrats on Pico Brew. They've done a great job of finding a ton of breweries, making different styles of beer. Um, you know one that we haven't gotten into? Um, who are the guys? Jimmy's or... Oh, uh, Bad Jimmy? Bad Jimmy. We have yeah. not tried any Bad Jimmy's yet. You know what? We, so we went to the Washington State Brewers Festival. Oh, that was oh, I, that was, was after was, Andy Lusk Day. I that struggled was so much fun. Though. I struggled. So, so I went there and I found they had a they had a habanero ale. Yes, and it, I had it too. It was literally my favorite I beer know, of, of the night. all time. Yes, no, not just of the night, really? but like of all time we ever. Need to try. Bad Jimmy's has beers on Pico Brew. We have to try. They they do. And we, we need we to. Do. They don't have that one yet, but we have to try. No, but we, they, so, they should totally have that one. That was like, God, this is good, dude. I I would even add shit to that fucking pico pack. I would go back. I would open the pico pack. I would chop up habaneros with gloves on and put that shit in there to get that beer. It was so good. Yes, it was so good. I like spicy food. I like spicy stuff, but that was amaze balls. Amaze balls. Amaze balls. I, this is, I'm 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 throwing out every like Instagram slash YouTube slash of beer. This, dude, this beer right here. This you beer. almost started a rhyme. Finish it. This beer right here, if it was a little more clear, would be it's, so good that I couldn't not make right you here. hear how much I appreciate the shit in my glass. I'm gonna drink it Show until it I can my... stand. No more sass. No more sass. So. I think you know we like it. I think you know you want to brew it if you're listening and you own a Pico Brew. Brew um, this beer. Do we I don't any... care who you are. I don't care what kind of beer you who like. Who are you? Brew this fucking beer. It's really, really tasty. It's really, it's so good. Um, <laughs> brew it just like Sam. <laughs> What'd you do? We didn't even ask. No, no. So I seriously put it in my Pico Brew, hit all the same buttons. I did not increase alcohol or decrease. I didn't increase or decrease IBUs. Mm -hmm. I brewed it exactly like it's supposed to be brewed. I put it in a brew keg. Took my brew keg, waited one day. One day. Pitched my yeast, half a packet. Okay. Closed it up, put it in a brew bag, buy a brew bag. This is so big. Guys, don't put this in your house, in your garage, because your temperature goes up and down too fast, too much. By at least like 10 to 12 degrees. Buy a brew bag. It's like a cooler made for your beer and get a waterproof one off of either your local homebrew shop or get one off Amazon, but get a water, make sure are you, it is Are you waterproof. throwing water in there to actually help not. make that temperature but swing here's go the key. After, slower? After almost two weeks, I will take a ton of either ice or often frozen bottles of water, throw them in there, and let it sit for a day, often swapping them out every few hours. During the summer? Anytime. I'm trying to get it down to about 45 degrees in there. Are you really? Okay. Because I want to, that's my cold crash before I rack. Oh, so you're using the brew I'm bag. I'm using the brew crash. bag to cold crash because my fridge with all of my children, there are so many children. I'm, I'm thinking of converting to Mormonism. I mean, this is. You're kind of there already. I'm getting there. And between them, my wife, my fridge has no room. <laughs> you're about to go there. My fridge has no room for all of these brew kegs. They do not easily fit. I have to move shelves yeah. and stuff, right? That's and, just that's just normal. And so instead, I have this giant brew bag. I can put two to three brew kegs in at once. I can dump ice. I can dump whatever I want in there. So I did ice one time. Yeah. And I just kept putting ice from my ice maker every few hours. I dump more ice in. And two days later, I had perfectly cold crash brews. I think this might have been out of that so group. Good. And it turned out perfect. The beer, if you get it up against something clear, is is it's very actually clear. Light. The SRM is just dark it's so dark but it's it's, it's clear you can but see dark through it even yeah. though it's dark it's a super clear beer um so you can cold crash in your bag in your brew bag if you buy the right kind rack it i prefer the bottles but put uh, actually the serving kegs i'm totally into the serving kegs especially after our latest halloween episode um i've got hoppy claws and santa's paws and whatever stuff i've got going right now that we're going to be reviewing at holiday time but right out of uh the, the brew store Christmas duck. Christmas That's duck. It was yeah. Christmas duck. It's Foggy Noggin's Christmas duck. Yeah. Because they're another local brewery. Dude, I can't. I kind of want to order that one and brew it. Order that one and brew it. I'm doing it. I need to do it. I need to. It's get, you're getting late now. I've got no more. I've got no more kegs available. I gotta mm -hmm. like rack some shit. Rack it. And um, so that's what I did, guys. I just did it the right way. Use the Pico brew, all the base settings, put it in a brew keg, half of the yeast, 
two weeks in a brew bag, racked it on the last two days, cold crashed it in the brew bag, racked it into bottles and have a delicious brew. And I naturally carbonated it with the provided sugars. And I even did Sammy. I did the Scarface breakdown. Oh yeah. And I just poured sugar in each bottle, called it a day, didn't measure it. Um, uh, you know what? I don't think I posted that on YouTube yet. That was one like I oh. didn't do, but I'll, I'll do that. Like I'll do that. How I broke down my sugars. There you on go. Thanksgiving Day, that'll be released. Sweet. And um, give some thanks. That's 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 then gonna happen before this comes out because Thanksgiving is tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Nice. Yeah, but Set but I up, bro. like I, I think I'm gonna exhaust all of our like backlog of recorded stuff by mm. then, and. I was thinking about putting this out on Black Friday, but I might have to like wait another week so we can we can actually record some more next week because your Van Dam, yeah. fuck, it needs to be fucking carbon. But I'm gonna carbon. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna throw some sugars in these bottles. And I'm no, gonna... that's not gonna be fast enough though. Yeah, put well, it in the, can you put what's left in a brew keg or a serving keg? I'm. Do you I want might, me to? I might bring have you one keg left. Room? Could you brought me an extra keg? So I bet you I could put it in. And I do have a plug I can force carbonate with because my other what ones I'm I naturally carbonating. What if I bring you the tap room? Yeah, I got um, to pee too. I have to pee so And bad. on that note. Are we going to close it because yeah. of our urination situation? Yep. So much pee has to happen. Goodbye, friends. Pico dudes. Out. You've reached the end of another episode of the Pico Dudes Podcast. Connect with us at picodudes.com, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed our show, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts, but mostly iTunes. Also, if you want a code that will help give you some discounts off of the Pico Brew equipment, Z150D equals $150 off of the Z Series. Pro, P-R-O, 125D gives you $125 off of the Pico Pro, and C75D gets you $75 off of your purchase of the Pico C. We hope you enjoy listening. Look forward to hearing from you. Pico Dudes, out.